we get started? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Let me, uh, just uh, bring this up here. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll introduce you to everybody. I think a lot of people already know you. Uh, welcome to everybody for uh, joining us today on uh, on our webinar number one in this series of three for understanding the mail log and troubleshooting missing messages and the email headers. Um, a lot of you are, have already worked with uh, Steve Sweeney before, our uh, CEO for, for Port Systems Limited. Um, well, I, we know you're all very busy people, so we won't keep it uh, too long. I think the presentation is about 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll open up the uh, forum for uh, uh, questions at the end. Um, you can be, if you have any questions during the um, uh, presentation, just put them in the chat window, and I'll make sure that uh, we get to them um, at the end, and uh, Steve and I can answer any questions. Um, as always, um, if, you, if we didn't cover something, uh, you can always shoot us an email to support at fsl.com, and uh, we'll be able to get all that information to you. Uh, other than that, uh, Steve, uh, thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. So I'll pass it over to Steve. And uh, again, thanks again. And we'll let's get this thing rolling. Yeah, let's roll. Okay. Good afternoon, Robin. Should everybody mute their microphones during the presentation and then open them up? Uh, sure. Yeah. I, I'll uh, afterwards. Got that. Cool. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, most of you already know me, but for those who don't, I'm Steve Sweeney. The President and or CEO of Fort Systems Limited. Uh, we have a lot to cover today and I'm very happy to announce that we have a larger than anticipated audience. So uh, we'll hold off answering your questions until the end of the presentation, but since we'll be using the GoToMeeting chat window to take questions, you can enter your question in the chat window anytime during the presentation. And I'll be staying around as long as necessary to answer all of the questions. Um, this is the, today I'll be presenting the first of three webinars that will help you to understand how email is processed on your gateways. Today's presentation, along with the next two, should give you an understanding of the tools and methods you'll need to track and solve email problems. Now, next week we'll be examining email headers, and in the final webinar we'll be putting the lessons we learned in webinars one and two to work solving real world email problems. Some of you are using our Barricade MX Plus software, which provides one level of spam filtering using our SMTPF application. Now, this diagram shows SMTPF listening on port 25 and accepting incoming email session connections. Uh, in our Barricade MX Plus application, uh, Haraka and MailScanner are used to provide filtering similar to that provided by SMTPF in the Barricade MX application. SMTPF can only reject the email for return to the original sender or pass the message along to a local instance of SendMail for final delivery. SMTPF also logs its action to slash var slash log slash mail log. What SMTP are different in format from the messages that you'll see logged by Haraka. They are very comparable and are documented in the mail log documentation references section, which you can download from the uh, uh, web interface. And uh, we'll try to mail that out to you tomorrow, too. <clears throat> if the SMTPF process calls SendMail, SendMail tries to deliver the message immediately. If the message can't be delivered immediately, it's placed in slash var slash spool slash MQ directory, and that information is logged. Redelivery is attempted for five days. If the message can't be delivered after four hours, though, the recipient will be warned right away there's a message delivery problem. If the message still can't be delivered after five days, it's returned to the sender with a non-delivery receipt. All, each and every, redelivery attempt is also logged to the mail log by SendMail. Since most of you are using our Barricade MX Plus web software, you, you probably know that it provides two levels of spam filtering. Level 1 filtering is provided by our Haraka application. Haraka listens on port 25 and accepts incoming email session connections. Haraka can only reject the email for return to the original sender or pass the message along to a local instance of SendMail listening on 26, port 26. Haraka logs all the details of the session of the mail log. SendMail accepts the message from Haraka and places the message in 
slash var slash bool slash mq dot in directory and logs its actions. Mail scanner picks up the email from the mq in directory and performs the level two filtering of the message. Depending on what mail scanner find and how it's configured, it, it can quarantine the message, return the message to the sender, or call sendmail to deliver the message to the final recipient. Whichever action it performs is logged to the mail log. If sendmail is called, it tries to deliver the message immediately. If the message can't be delivered immediately, it's placed in slash var slash bool slash nq directory, and that information is logged. Redelivery is again attempted for five days. If the message can't be delivered after four hours, the recipient will be warned there is a delivery problem. And if the message is still can't be delivered after five days, it's returned to the sender with a non-delivery receipt. All redelivery attempts are also mailed to the uh, log to the mail log. And before we get to analyzing the, uh, the, the mail log, I'd like to take just a quick look at the syslog process that actually creates the mail log. The syslog daemon accepts log data from the kernel and from all local processes. It can even accept data from processes on remote systems. It's flexible as, as well, allowing you to determine what gets logged, where it gets logged, which is typically in the var log directory. And note that systems with clustered mail gateways often configure the master server in the cluster, or a separate server even, to receive mail log data from all members of the cluster. This means that tracking errant messages by looking through the syslog can be done in one place on the cluster, the central log server. What is logged in what is logged is controlled in slash etsy slash syslog.d. As we'll see later, the, the detail level of the logs can be easily changed. Log retention and rotation is controlled by log rotate. I've included uh, references for centralized logging and syslog.d and log rotate d at the end of the mail log, doc, the mail log documentation that is uh, now available on the web page. If any of you did not receive this documentation or, or can't find it or have a problem getting it, just send a request to support at fsl.com, and we'll be happy to send it to you. I should also mention that while you can customize syslog and log rotate, most sites will be just fine using the default configuration. OK, time to flip some screens around here and look at the details of what gets logged. This will just take a second, I hope. OK, hopefully all of you now should be seeing, well, now you will, <laughs> the beginning of understanding the mail log. This is the document that's available for download on the web page. And uh, we'll send it to you if you can't get it any other way. Um, it's intended to help you, this document's intended to help you understand and track email using the data in the mail log. Now let's start by looking at a typical Haraka mail log entry. As you can see, it, it's, it's simple to break the line down into parts that contain the date timestamp, the host name, the process ID that's actually doing the logging, the log severity level, in this case it's like notice, the session or message ID, that's a long crazy number there which we're going to get into in great detail a little later, the Haraka plugin name that's doing the core, uh, this might be in this case the core Process Haraka process, but this can be something like uh, S, uh, oh, what is it? SPF checks or DNS checks or uh, one of the plug Haraka plugins that's actually doing the work and doing the reporting will be listed here. And uh, the actual log message in, in this case that's the sender and a code OK message quote quote code OK message quote quote. Well, you'll see those a lot. Those um, I'm um, looking forward here. Da, 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 da. They are essentially uh, messages from Haraka to Haraka, where Haraka can pr uh, uh, log additional data to the logs or to uh, other processes can pick up, other send Haraka processes can, can pick up. The Haraka IDs are, are need a little explanation. The following information is used by uh, is in, the following information. I've got a typo here in my narrative. Sorry. The following information is important to understand. 
Haraka uses UUIDs, or Universally Unique Identifiers, for its session and transaction IDs. The session ID and the transaction ID together, and you see down there, session ID, transaction ID, dot one is the transaction ID, together make up the Haraka message ID. <coughs> a session starts at the beginning of a new TCP connection on port 25 and ends when the connection is closed by the sending server. A transaction starts whenever the sender, sending MTA, sends a SMTP mail from command. A sending MTA can send multiple transactions in a single connection or session. In other words, a host can send an email, then after sending the first email, it can send a second. It can actually send two or more additional emails without hanging up the connection. The first email will have a transaction ID of 1. The next message will have the same session ID but a transaction ID of 2. And each subsequent separate email will increment the transaction ID by 1. Uh, note, too, that transaction may or may not yield a message as a, since a transaction ID might be rejected before a message is sent. This would be the case uh, if we rejected a message after receiving an IP that's enlisted in spam house and we just drop the connection. But typically, a single email is sent in a single session. So when searching through the logs, you should use the session ID to show the entire session, and then search for the session ID plus the transaction ID if you want to isolate uh, specific messages that you are interested in, which are all in the same session. Araka log levels are typically left at the default shown below. Unless you need to see more details about the section about the session to debug an email problem, and it's very easy to raise the logging um, one level simply by logging into the system as root and running echo log info all caps redirect to the file etsy slash araka slash config slash log info. Then to return the system to its default level again, very simple echo. And simply run echo, log notice, all capitals, to the file slash etsy slash araka config slash log info. Note the new log level must be entered in uppercase shown above. And no restart of any process is required for this change to take effect. Now three processes log this to the to the mail log mail scanner, send mail on araka. We've already looked at the typical araka entry. Now let's look at the mail scanner, typical mail scanner log line example. The first three parts of the mail scanner log entry are similar to the Haraka log entry and contain the date, timestamp, host name, and process ID. But the log portion of the message is substantially different. It always contains the send mail queue ID, typically near the start of the log message, but and then followed by the actual log message. Uh, the QID can also be part of the actual log message. The send mail log line example is again similar. The first three parts contain the date timestamp, the host ID, and the process ID. The log message from send mail will always contain the send mail QID at the start of the log message, followed by the actual message logged by send mail. Now, we, <coughs> excuse me. We've already reviewed the process flow of a typical email, barricade and barricade at max. The important part of the information shown below is that a single message that makes it all the way through barricade at max or barricade at max plus processing is del and is delivered to the recipient will have some long log lines that contain the Haraka message ID, which is, again, composed of the session ID and the transaction ID, as well as the send mail slash mail scanner queue ID. So to find all of the log entries, you need to search the mail log for both the Haraka message ID and the send mail mail scanner QID. And we'll see how to tie those two together here in just a second. Okay. So now you should have enough information to, 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 to follow uh, an actual log session, which we've reproduced in the documentation. <laughs> So we're finally at the part where you should be able to understand a complete message transfer as seen by the mail log. Note that the log entries below were created with the logging severity set to log notice, which is the default setting. 
So first, Haraka starts the logs by saying, oh, there's a new message, the Haraka process and process ID, the severity level, the Haraka core plugin, which is logging, the entry and the sender <coughs> of the message, and the Haraka message ID. Note that the log entries uh, entry containing the code equals OK and message equal OK are, again, just normal part of every Haraka message and are used when necessary to pass information between Haraka processes or to the logs. Normally, they're OK and blank. The second Haraka log entry shows the recipient of the message, the Haraka message ID, and, again, miscellaneous information. Then Haraka logs, again, the Haraka message ID, the successful processing of the message, and details regarding the message itself. And most of these are pretty obvious. Uh, size, one recipient's accepted, zero, nobody was 10 failed, nobody was rejected, and the message took so many seconds, 0.3, to process, and processing continues. Right. Next to Rocka logs, the message ID and the send mile QA ID, along with the fact that send mail accepted the message for delivery. This is where send mail passed the message to send mail. And it's important because this notice ties the Haraka ID and the SendMail QID together. So from now on, when SendMail logs or Haraka logs, we have to look for the SendMail message ID, that R8 and BB number, to find the rest of the message logs. The next Haraka log, let me get my screens coordinated here. Okay, so at this point, Haraka has passed the message to send mail. So now, oh, it's got one more send mail entry. Sorry, I missed this. Finally, Haraka logs the Haraka message ID and the fact that sending mail MTA has disconnected and many details about the completed session. Okay? The documentation below will explain what each of these kind of cryptic things means. RDNS, uh, receipts 1 slash 0 slash 0, all that's just recipient counters. It means... One, one message accepted, none temp failed, and then rejected. But each of these uh, is message who may need to troubleshoot an email. But now since Haraka has passed the message to SendMail, SendMail now does the logging. And the first SendMail message shows that SendMail, uh, all it does is show that SendMail accepts the message on port 26. And the message identifier of the sender that's the, the sending domain, uh, the protocol, the daemon, the relay, and the fact it's running on port 127.0.0. Then it logs the send mail queue ID and the successful delivery of the message to the incoming spool directory. And that's the end of the, the, this instance of send mail's logging, because all it does is drop that message off in bar, bar spool mq.in and say, OK, I finished. OK, now mail scanner starts logging. So. The fourth log entry, um, mail scan, oh, after the mail scanner trial process has picked up the message for further processing, mail scanner starts logging. The first log entry from mail scanner shows that mail scanner has, it shows that mail scanner has, uh, it shows the results of scanning the message using spam assessment along with the send mail QID. Then the next two log entries report that two attachments are being allowed through. And again, mentions the send mail queue ID in both log entries. The fourth mail scanner entry shows the results of content scanning, again, along with the send mail queue ID. And finally, mail scanner reports the send mail queue ID and the successful logging of the message to the Postgres mail log database. This is the one used by the reports directory, um, standard reports directory in the web interface. And finally, SendMail completes the logging for this message by reporting the successful delivery of the message to the recipient, along with details of the delivery. That's this entry here. Now, there's a little more in this documentation. We finally leave you with some references, very brief at this stage, for using FGRAP or GRAP. Um, interesting enough, for some rudimentary, just some rudimentary examples using the FGRAP command. Note that FGRAP, or 
the same as running grep space minus capital F in Linux, is the fix or fast flavor and behaves as grep does, the normal grep, but does not recognize any regular expression meta characters as being special. They're treated like uh, part of the search string. It's a handy feature since mail logs can typically contain meta characters that you want to include in your search string. We'll go into more detailed examples in the use of FGRAP in our last webinar when we cover email troubleshooting, but these examples, along with references at the end, uh, should get you started. And finally, the references. We leave you with some references if you want to dig deeper into um, syslogd, log rotation, send mail logging, FGRAP, and the SMTPF logs. And again, these are informational. Uh, the average admin doesn't have to be too concerned about these. Uh, but if you're running a larger clustered uh, system, I would definitely say, gee, maybe you ought to centralize the log, uh, the mail logging if you haven't done so already or we haven't suggested it to you. So again, read these. And uh, now I'm going to, this finishes, this is the end of that documentation. So I'm going to, uh, almost ready to take questions. Just a couple more torture by PowerPoint screens to wade through. And we will be there. So. Allow me to do some flipping of screens here. Hey, it worked. <laughs> OK, we're through with the nitty-gritty details. Uh, some, uh, hopefully, you'll find this interesting. Uh, we have been very hard at work on the next versions of Barricade MX and Barricade MX Plus. Uh, one of the major improvements is that Haraka has been enhanced to be a fully functional MTA. They can send and receive and queue messages. This means we no longer need to use send mail, so all the Barricade MX mail log entries will be made by Haraka using a single message ID for all log entries that match up with an individual entry, yeah, individual message. You can see what a big help this is when you're troubleshooting. We will also be a completely new Bayes database to replace the outdated spam assassin implementation. There will be a new web interface and dashboard written in Node.js. Uh, essentially, all of the Barricade MX and Barricade MX Plus code, along with the web interface, will be written using Google's very fast event-driven Node.js um, language with Haraka extensions. And finally, Barricade MX will be back-ended using a very fast database for tracking messages using the web interface. And Barricade MX Plus, obviously, will have all of the new Barricade MX features plus more configuration options, multi-level user and domain logins, uh, all of the current mail scanner functionality and more will be implemented in Node.js code, Node.js and Haraka code. No more Perl. You can imagine what a performance increase this is. It's, it's huge. So while no releases of that data is available yet, I can admit that we are, we, us at FSL, are using all the new Haraka-based code to process our own email. And, and it's pretty amazing. But then again, I am a bit prejudiced. So don't forget, this starts the question and answer period of this webinar. But we'll be here again at the same time next week. And we hope you can join us then for the deciphering email webinar headers. Great. Thank you, Steve. Um, okay. I think some people joined us uh, a little late. Uh, uh, sorry that you missed uh, the beginning portion of it. But we will have uh, the um, this whole uh, webinar up on YouTube, um, hopefully in a, in a day or so, so that you can uh, review it. Or um, uh, if you miss some part of it, you can always watch it again. Uh, again, the documentation that Steve was referring to is up on the um, FSL dot um, com website. Um, you can uh, visit there, and uh, actually, I'll I'll show it to where while we're all here, I'll pull it up, and you can see where it is. This is the documentation he's talking about, and what I was referring to in the middle part of the presentation. So um, I intended this to be a, a handy sort of a reference to keep pull out when you've got to really dig in the logs and see what's going on. It's a starter. We'll obviously be covering much more about troubleshooting email and uh, some of the other tricks we use to find mail when there's a problem yeah. in the last webinar. So. We, we, we do have a lot of people here today, so just to keep the uh, keep it flowing, if anybody has any questions so far or any any comments, please feel free to just put them in the chat window, and uh, we'll, um, we'll I'm, I'm monitoring that right now, and Steve will and I will do our best to uh, get.
got some masks for you. For you to type, you can just unmute your phone and, and ask the question. I can hear and will answer. Sure. I'll, you <laughs> okay. know, let's, let's just try that. Let's see how it works. I'll unmute everybody. So don't don't everybody just jump in at once. <laughs> just uh, say your name and uh, we'll, we'll 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 get to you. Hi, it's not there in the hey Paul. It's not in that section of the uh, first question came up. It's not in that session. Uh, Robin, can you give him the uh, link to the uh, doc? It's going to be there. Yeah, it's right not now in the webinar section. It's in the webinar section right now, and um, right. you can. Uh, it's it's in the webinar one. You can download it. It says you've downloaded the BMX documentation here. You can pull it down there. I will put it into the uh, support documentation. Just got to move it over. This was actually a fairly difficult presentation to put together because. This, this information is not easy, and how it works is not easy to find. And we had not previously documented. That's my fault. I'm responsible for the documentation. So we're finally putting it all together as part of the beginning of documenting our new Barricade MX and Barricade MX Plus documentation. Um, I've always tried to make the documentation uh, task-oriented so that you easily find that. Uh, an example for what you're trying to do. In other words, gee, I got a route to a new domain. Well, here's how you do that. I want to whitelist or blacklist a site. And that's how you do that. This documentation will eventually go into a, a document called troubleshooting email, where it will be completely rewritten. I'm not going to do that until we finish the new Barricade MX and Barricade MX Plus, because obviously all the logging is going to change. The only process logging to the mail log will be Haraka, and it will be turned up to be, can be turned up to be incredibly verbose. So a professional email admin can find out anything they need to know by turning up the logging and sending a test message. This is what we essentially do when we de-mail, uh, debug Haraka or mail delivery problems for you now. But it's not that hard for anybody to do it, at least get a start on it. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting this done because it doesn't exist. So again, I look forward to, to all new documentation, too, for the new Barricade MX and Barricade MX Plus. Hopefully as good or better than the documentation we provided before. I can't believe there aren't any questions. Yeah, I think uh, you, you must have done a really, really good, awesome job explaining Is everything. Is that good a job? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it has taken a couple weeks to put this together because yeah. I had to pull data from all over the place and then make it, no, try to make it logical. Great. Send mail is, has been more complex than it needs to be, frankly. What we're trying to do with this Haraka and building a, a filtering engine that is based around filtering rather than just delivery, in other words, building the application so it handles mail very safely and can detect what, what we're seeing is almost, in, in, in the application we're running now, is almost complete and accurate, very accurate, send mail, um, junk mail detection. Uh, so Steve, have, sorry, uh, we, yeah, we just got a um, question in from Peter. Uh, he wants to know, is it still command line to get to these logs? Yes, it's still command line. But what's happening in the new one is all the data that you now have to go into, the, you know there's a three-day log for the SMTP logs, it's three days of data going back, and then you have to only can get data for mail that was delivered for after three days, again, without going through the mail log. The mail logs always contain everything that happened to the systems, okay? And that can be saved forever. Typically, it's rotated a week at a time, going back four weeks. But you can you can uh, move it to off-site storage or any place you want to and keep it forever. But with the new Haraka and some we're using some incredible database tricks, so we can now do uh, multi-level queries against millions of what look like database entries. And I'll give you a cent. It's not really a database. Uh, and get a response back in seconds. And we can keep data of most everything that's in the headers and the logs that's important for 30 days, instantly searchable. We, can, we will then be keeping summaries, and we'll even have another method to save all of that data, uh, but back it off the system uh, 
we're playing around with different things we can do now. So that uh, there, with the new data, there won't be, uh, it won't take that long to search. Now, I just see a couple of other messages came in. Hopefully that answered the question. Uh, is Martin Moore? In the references section, are those linked to other documents? Yes. Those are linked to web pages that describe, uh, follow what the title said. Okay. Okay. In other words, I could... Steve, there, there is a mistake in the files. The um, the links aren't working in the PDF. Um, everybody, uh, uh, I, okay. Yeah, I apologize for that, and uh, we'll we'll get that fixed up, and uh, um, I'll uh, put the, the new files up as soon as possible. Okay, they they are links there. Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll append a um, a V two on the end so you know that that the uh, the change has been made. Well, uh, this is a Google Doc. What you have to do is download it as a PDF file and replace that with it. Okay, that's where the mistake is. Uh, Devin Henley also has another question. Is there any plans to change or allow other virus software? Yeah, actually, I think there's one other we can support now, and we're looking at two more. Um, we can support any any virus scanner pretty easily that um, basically listens to the process. In other words, you just pass the message to the virus scanner on a, on a port. That's how we're uh, calling uh, it would be. Uh, if you have a specific virus, uh, support it. Be happy to look at it. Um, I'll also, are we gonna, are there, there may be one or two others we support now in our archive. I have to check with Steve Freyard on it, but I'll put that word out. Okay. okay. Other questions? We'll be here for a little while if anybody wants to hang around. Um, I think we're about at about the half hour mark, so we'll, we'll kind of wrap things up here. About, I, I know you guys are all busy, and it's kind of late in the day for you guys. Um, again, if you want to Any reference anything. Any comments you have about the presentation, uh, what would make it better, what would make it worse, <laughs> I'll be happy to take. So just send me an email. Send it to steve at fsl.com, and uh, we'll try to... Uh, improve if we can and uh, keep up this quality of uh, this series of seminars and then we're looking at a couple of others after this three first three is done so you will be in touch what can I say other than that if nobody else has any other questions I'll hang around for a while but uh, that's the bulk of the presentation guys and thank you very much for attending I really appreciate it yeah thank you very much everybody um, again you know if you have any support questions just uh, email us at supportfsl.com or give us a call we'll be happy to help you with uh, anything um, any suggestions again just send them over to either Steve or or info at fsl.com that will get to everybody in the company if it's um, uh, I think that's about it um, just want to let everybody know that there is another webinar next week on understanding email headers. We had a bit of a, a mix up there on the. Um, no, no, in the no, no. Next week is deci yeah deciphering the email headers. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no way to understand them. <laughs> Just too crazy. So we we do our best to decipher them. And once you have those two pieces in place, you'll be able to do some real email troubleshooting on your own. Yeah, that'll be on week three. Mm -hmm. And you'll have picked up a valuable skill set because not a lot of people can actually do that. Okay? So, well, I'm going to be signing off right now. I've got some work to do, an install. And, uh, Robin, are you going to hang around? Uh, yeah, I'll be here for a little while. I'm just going to fix the uh, the PDF file. I'll put it up there. Again, I'll append it with a V2 so that everybody knows that it's been, uh, the links are working. I'll verify that this time. Um, thank you very much. And, uh, again, if somebody missed any, any of the beginning of it, uh, we'll have it up on YouTube, uh, hopefully by the end of today, and uh, you, you'll uh, be able to pick it up there. I'll also put a link up on the uh, the webinar page so that you can uh, just get to it very quickly. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for coming out and uh, you're spending your valuable time with us. Um, uh, we look forward back to we'll seeing we'll you next see week. You. We'll see you next week, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.